Hi, I'm Gary Hamill. Welcome to the Adaptability Advantage Hackathon. You know, change has been accelerating for 150 years, but it has reached a new inflection point in our lifetimes. Think for a moment about all the things right now that are changing at an exponential pace. The number of mobile phones in the world, the amount of bandwidth that's available to us, the number of genes that have been sequenced, CO2 emissions, the explosive growth of social networks, and of course, the growth of knowledge itself. Every day, we are creating 25 billion gigabytes of new information. Truly, we live in a world where change has changed. We live in a world that seems to be all punctuation and no equilibrium, where the future is less and less an extrapolation of the past and where the shifts in intergenerational experiences and expectations are truly without precedent. Change is unrelenting, ever surprising, and often seditious, and in this environment, success is more fragile, more impermanent than ever before. Let's, let's look at some data. McKinsey did a study a few years back, and they, they looked at the top quintile of various industries, the top performers, top 20% in various industries, and what they found was that there was a 30% chance that those top companies would fall out of that leadership position over the next five years. And that topple rate, if you will, was three times greater than it had been just a few decades previous. In some industries like mobile phones, you can go from leader to laggard seemingly almost overnight. In other industries, it may take longer, but the risks are the same. And the fact that no one's turned your business upside down yet doesn't mean it won't happen in the next few years. You know, when an organization is changing more slowly than the world around it, it is on the road to irrelevancy, whether senior leadership recognizes that or not. So day by day and year by year, the costs of arrogance, denial, and nostalgia are going up. And we have to admit to ourselves that today we live in a world that is becoming more turbulent faster than most organizations are becoming more uh, adaptable. So, you know, there's not a lot we can predict about the future, but we can say with some certainty, I think, that sometime over the next few years, your organization will be challenged to change in a way for which it has no historic precedent. And the only question is, will it change in time or in crisis? And all too often, the answer is in crisis. You know, if you read all these books on change, and I've read a lot, you tend to see two kinds of stories. You see stories of change at the margin, a company that built a new IT system or moved into an adjacent market, but really it's, it's change that, that didn't challenge the most fundamental assumptions about that business. Virtually all the stories of deep change are stories of change in crisis, and often with a new leader as the hero of the epic. You know, think about this. This is kind of sad that it actually takes a coup to change a large organization. If you didn't know better, you'd think these large, sophisticated companies, when it came to change, they were benchmarking poorly governed third world dictatorships because that's how change happens there. It's belated, it's infrequent, and it's convulsive. Certainly, we can do better than this. And in our overly centralized, overly bureaucratized organization, Deep change is almost always too late. That's why most change programs are actually catch-up programs. Now, it's interesting. We know somewhere in our hearts, we know that our organizations are not very adaptable, that they're quite inertial. Because if it were otherwise, we wouldn't today almost expect that it will be the newcomers, not the old guard, who create the future. That will be Spotify and music and not EMI. In, in, in microprocessors, ARM Holdings rather than Intel, uh, in, 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 in communication, Skype rather than a traditional phone company, uh, on the web, Google rather than Microsoft. And it's all kind of amazing when you think about it because the incumbents, they had the resources. They had people, technology, distribution, brands. And yet again, we know in our hearts that really what matters today is not resources but resourcefulness or adaptability. Now the problem, of course, is that our organizations were never built to be very adaptable. Those management pioneers 150 years ago, they set out to routinize work to drive variety out and drive conformance in. And by golly, did they succeed. Predictability was valued above all else. But today in our creative economy, it's the irregular people with irregular ideas who create irregular products and services who, that lead to irregular successes. And so in many ways, our organizations are inertial at their core. 
They are too centralized. Top management has too much of its emotional equity invested in the past. There's too little slack in terms of time and money for people to experiment with new things. It's hard for first level folks to get access to, to capital, to prototype, to build things. Too few people feel empowered to, to initiate change. Deep industry orthodoxies are baked into our training programs. Our hiring criteria overvalue expertise and undervalue new thinking. So the goal is to change that. The goal of this hackathon is to start to, to imagine how we could build an evolutionary advantage in our organizations. Not a competitive advantage at a point in time, but this evolutionary advantage, an ability to always outrun change, to capture more than your fair share of tomorrow's opportunities, to rush out to meet the future, to be relentlessly optimistic and endlessly malleable. So to build that kind of evolutionary advantage, I think we're going to have to challenge a lot of our historical beliefs about change. I think in many companies, people believe that change starts at the top, that people will resist change, that uh, an organization can only cope with so much change, that you need a strong leader to drive change, that change is what, what happens between these long periods of stasis. We need, I think, to revisit those beliefs. And I believe, and my colleagues believe, that HR professionals can play an enormous role in helping to build and create truly adaptable organizations. Already, HR professionals are at the cusp of most change programs. And I think that HR's impact would be much greater if it could come together to really understand, instead of an episodic change program, how do we build this deeper, almost autonomic capacity for change? You know, you think about the body's autonomic systems. If you get on a treadmill and you start to exercise, your heart starts pumping more oxygen. You don't even have to, to think about. It happens automatically. If you have to get up and give a speech in front of a group of people, your adrenal glands will start pumping. All that adrenaline into your body, that happens spontaneously. When you see somebody who's attractive to you, your pupils dilate reflexively. And if you think of those words, automatically, spontaneously, reflexively, these are not the words we would use to describe change in our organizations, but with your help, maybe then they can become so. You know, I think there are all kinds of things that HR professionals can do to help to build this new capability of adaptability. We can start to design and facilitate change programs that are based on real-time cross-company conversations as opposed to, you know, episodic catch-up initiatives. We can build organizations that are much more nimble, much more fluid structures where a reorg is not something that happens every few years, but is constantly, an organization is constantly morphing and reshaping itself around new opportunities. We can start to build an army of change agents. How odd is it? How odd is it that in democracies we just expect it will be the activists who get up and change things, and yet in our companies we don't teach people how to be activists. We can work to create a high trust, low fear environment where people feel they have the ability to try new things and occasionally to fail. We can re-engineer our control-oriented management processes so we reduce the bureaucratic drag in our organizations. So we hope through this hackathon, we are going to hear from you, your best ideas, the, 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 the strategies you have, the new thinking you have about how do we build organizations that are resilient at their core. I am so excited to be partnering with CIPD and with all of you on this amazingly important challenge where our goal is to create organizations that are truly fit for the future, that are truly fit for human beings, and that can again and again invent the future. Thanks for joining us in this journey. I look forward to being part of the conversation.